collector and battle royal. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I hope you all had a great weekend and are looking forward to this holiday season. I'm very excited to be here with you today, not only to finish up the She-Hulk that we started last week, uh, which I'm very excited to finish this fantastic outfit that we began on for Jennifer Walters. I'm also really excited to be able to reveal to you our December Christmas uh, holiday gift-giving extravaganza, as it were. Um, as you all know, we talked about recently, a few months ago, kind of prepping everybody for the fact that there were not going to be no new character releases in December. One of the big things that we wanted to do not only was to kind of have a month and, and just let everyone enjoy what they had purchased and had worked on over the year and maybe play a little bit of catch up, depending on how uh, up to date you've been with the characters that you've gotten. We also wanted to uh, add a little bit more excitement and fun to the month and going forward into the new year with some brand new game formats uh, to spice up uh, the ways that in which you can play Crisis Protocol. And another thing that we wanted to do today is to take a moment and kind of talk about the nomenclature of our organized play of the formats that we're giving. And so there's a whole bunch of information that's gonna be coming out on the website uh, following this stream. I don't have an exact time because of the internet, but it will be coming out uh, today. And effectively what it's gonna do is it's gonna explain kind of our approach to all of the different game uh, variants that we're providing and that we're going to continue to provide over the coming next year. Kind of what to expect from those and hopefully provide some guidance to all of you out there as you start to be able to get back together in game stores and in safe ways in public and with your friends and family and all that good stuff uh, in order to find great ways to come together, know what you're going to be playing, the kind of game experience from MCP that you want because we have a lot of them and there are a lot more coming uh, and so that everyone's on the same page. So today, one of the big things that we're dropping, or we're dropping two new game formats. And the, to kind of give you a, a brief preview of the article that you're going to see that goes along with these new game formats is that we define game formats as specifically modes of play that change how you build your roster or your squad. So they don't change the base game mechanics at all. The way in which you play a game of Crisis Protocol on the Tabletop is done exactly the same way. Now, these are in opposition to game modes, which you've already seen a lot of this year. A game mode is something like an ultimate encounter or a vibranium heist. These are things that fundamentally change the way in which the game is played, whether by adding more players, adding different uh, effects to the game, bringing in new characters that are only available in that specific game mode, these kinds of things. So this is kind of a quick differentiation to know if you're playing a format, what you're looking at is playing something that's gonna change the strategy and tactics going into how you're gonna select a squad and your mission from a roster uh, in order to play a normal game of Crisis Protocol. Whereas if you're playing game mode, you're kind of looking at an entirely new gaming experience. It's fundamentally gonna change the way the action unfolds on the table, how many players are gonna be playing and things like that. So today we're dropping two new formats for you. And we've gone even further and broken down these formats into two very distinct types. So we have arena formats. Arena formats are really designed for parties. These are when you get all of your friends together who play the game and you're gonna make a whole day of it. So the first arena format that you're gonna see that drops today is called the collector format. The collector format is really cool in that it kind of turns uh, the whole game into an NFL uh, fantasy football style draft. If you know anything about American football for our folks overseas, I'm sure you do. Uh, but effectively what's gonna happen is you're gonna work with your friends, you're gonna bring together all of your collections and you're gonna create a whole drafting pack. 
And so you're gonna open these packs and much like you would in a CCG draft pack or things like that, you're gonna be able to select characters from these different packs as you pass around the table. And you're gonna build a roster from these selections. So effectively it's a drafting format in a very true collectible card kind of style. Uh, from there, you're gonna play all of your normal games of Crisis Protocol and you're just gonna have a good time using what you were able to pull from the draft itself. This one, again, we call it an arena format because it requires a lot of organization. It requires a whole kind of planning phase before the game. It's really meant to come together, celebrate a fun and unique way to play Crisis Protocol with your friends in a base way that also changes the strategy and tactics going in. Uh, the format that you're gonna see does have, provide some kind of standard foundational packs to use if you don't wanna create your own. There are rules for creating your own as well. So this format is really looking forward to the time when we can all get together back in the game stores uh, in a big kind of party way and enjoy this fun different take on how we're going to play Crisis Protocol together moving forward. The other format that's coming out today is called the Battle Realm format. So this one is very much taking the idea of an expanded roster system and introducing a pick and a ban system or we call it a recruitment phase. What you're going to do in the Battle Realm game is you're going to come to the table with 15 characters in a roster and additional cards and such as well and it's all laid out in there. But effectively over the course of uh, several rounds during the recruitment phase, you're going to choose characters from your roster and then your opponent's gonna choose a character from your roster to ban. You're gonna go back and forth like this, picking and banning characters, um, recruiting and I believe exiling characters is the terminology in the document uh, until you wind up with a normalized roster. Now you're gonna do all this after having flipped over your mission. So you're having an expanded option of rosters when you see what you can build from but the flip is, is that even though you have 15 characters, you're gonna wind up with a lot less of those characters as your opponent specifically chooses things to ban or to exile and for you to recruit. So this becomes a whole strategic kind of game of cat and mouse where you're looking at what your opponent's taking, what they have available to them, what the mission is, and it adds that extra level of strategic uh, and tactical kind of choice that can be really rewarding and really fun. And of course, this is not an arena format, uh, this one, is very easy to do at a game store. It doesn't require a lot of setup. You simply have to know before the game begins with your opponent, before you create that initial roster, hey, we're gonna play the Battle Realm form format, which means that you're gonna bring this expanded Battle Realm roster. You're gonna come to the table, you're gonna go through the pick band section, the recruiting phase, and then you're gonna be able to set up and play a normal game of Crisis Protocol with this newly created roster from a newly created squad from the recruitment phase. Again, these are all kind of options that players can choose to use, that you can choose to use with your friends in various ways that make it fun for you. These are things that we do say uh, for the, the arena formats. They're not exactly built to be added on to our Crisis Day events, which are our normal event kits in stores once stores are able to open back up and safely begin running tournaments and, and events, excuse me, uh, things like that, uh, organized play events in their stores. Um, these are not the arena formats are not really for that kind of experience because they do require a much higher level of player uh, preparation and, of course, of organization. However, the uh, Battle Realm format is perfect for putting on top of something like a Crisis Day event because you simply have to ascribe to the new um, updated roster rules where you bring an expanded roster and then you simply have to provide a little bit of time for that recruitment phase and then you're playing the game as normal. So it offers a lot of different opportunities to stretch your tactical prowess, uh, your strategic thinking, and, and your collections a little bit in different ways that we think will be fun and provide a lot of opportunities to do new things. So those are the things that are coming today. Uh, we hope that you'll have fun with them over the holidays as you begin to uh, meet and hopefully greet with folks in safe and social distancing practices ways. And as we move forward into 2021 and we get even more OP going on, uh, it's yet another way to kind of continue to enhance and refresh the experiences of playing games together in a multitude of different ways. And of course, we, like I said, this is all kind of looking forward to the future of 2021 where we have a whole lot more things coming out. Uh, it began with the Ultimate Encounters. We had Vibranium Heist, which was our first organized play kit. We have several more coming on the way, each of which is going to add new game modes, new formats, and all that stuff. So we just want to make sure that everybody had a cohesive nomenclature with which to use so that we all understand what kind of gaming experience we're looking at when we come to the table. And it also allows us to utilize this thing in a much better way. 
So with that, I'm gonna stop talking, get this camera off of me, and we're gonna jump on to the She-Hulk and get her wrapped up so that we can move on to Enchantress for next week's stream. So if you remember, this is where we left off on our She-Hulk. We got our blues mostly down. We started on our whites. We have an initial wash of green with a little bit of shade for the skin. We worked on that hair, which we started with a green wash and then moved to a black wash um, to begin to tint it down. I thought maybe at the end of the last stream, I might want to make it a little darker. I'm not sure I'm kind of liking the amount of green that's showing through the black. I could tone this down as much as I wanted to. However, um, we'll kind of play it by ear and decide where we want to go. So one of the things I missed last time is I do need to do the fingers. I realized that I want these to be kind of fingerless gloves that she's wearing. So I got to get the green on those. We want to go back in. We're going to punch up that white. We're going to add highlights to our blue. Uh, we're going to work on the face and the skin. And then hopefully we'll get time to at least throw down some metals on this girder. And we'll get her pretty close to what I would call wrapped up now. So with that in place, the first place I'm going to start is I'm actually going to start on... We'll start on the skin. So we're going to start highlighting the skin. So what I'm going to use for that is I'm going to start by using this Goblin Flash, which is a really nice, bright uh, yellow green. It has a lot of vibrancy to it. It's actually, um, we used that with a mixture of a different green, which I think was Green Skin Flesh from Fantasy and Scale. In order to wash the skin, you can go back and watch the stream last week to see exactly what I did. Um, but we're gonna start with that. We're just gonna kind of blend with our two brush approach. And as we go to get successive highlights, we're just gonna add a little bit more yellow. And I believe that we'll be just be using uh, this Madruk yellow, which is just a really nice primary kind of yellow. We'll be mixing that in to get a really nice vibrant green. Cause I, for my characters and for this She-Hulk, I'm really imagining that really poppy comic book, like color saturated feel. Uh, we're not going for a realistic green skin tone like you'd see in the MCU or things like that. Uh, we're just we're just gonna drive forward on getting a nice kind of comic book esque tone and look to this She-Hulk. I hope everybody's excited, having fun, looking forward to playing some new formats for MCP. We had a really great time coming up with them. Uh, it was kind of a fun departure for Pagani and myself. He actually spearheaded the arena format with uh, the collector uh, which was something that was really exciting for him to do from his days as a ccg player and such and we always wanted to do a really fun kind of fantasy drafting format for mcp and as the characters and the options grew we just wound up with more and more opportunities for that so i'm really excited to watch as you all out there get chances to play with that, to see some of the crazy drafts that happen and how people select their characters and their lists through a bit of the luck of the draw. And do you spite draft? Do you go for something and switch halfway through? And then, of course, my personal favorite, just because I've always really liked kind of pick-ban approaches in different games, uh, the <clears throat> Battle Realm format was kind of initialized from my desire to see some of that stuff in. I really like the challenge strategically of coming to the table with way more than you know you're going to have and then having your opponent actually have a say in what you get to take. It obviously makes you think differently. You can't always guarantee that you're going to get the right combination of characters or cards that you might in a normal game. So it changes your approach. It requires you to have contingencies. Um, so it's a really fun way to stretch and challenge your tactical and strategic acumen. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just going through and I'm just picking out the places where I want the light to be really sharp. And we're just highlighting kind of in a natural way. And then I'm coming through with my blend brush and I'm just doing a little bit to blend it out. <clears throat> and yeah, for those who are asking, all of this information along with the article that explains the organized play and event formatting and stuff going forward with all of these different gameplay types and modes and formats is going to be posted up on the website a little later today, hopefully shortly after the stream ends, internet willing. 
but there'll be plenty of good information for you all. It'll recap it in a much more sensical way um, and kind of give you all the crunchy details. But we realized as we were going forward and talking about, you know, expanding the different ways in which the game can be played and experienced and enjoyed, that was going to be really important to kind of set expectations and give the community a really solid kind of foundational nomenclature to be able to utilize as they talk about these things. So, you know, when I say, hey, we're going to run an event at the store and we're going to utilize a different format, you know, okay, that means that we're playing normal MCP, but the way in which we're going to select our rosters and our squads is going to be different based on which format is chosen. And then, of course, we wanted to provide guidance for folks, like, in terms of what each format is because not everything we do is necessarily meant for a store to run although you can do anything you want that works best for your community but things like arena formats are really not meant for a whole group of strangers coming together for a single in-play event at a store arena events are really meant for those groups of friends that are close that know each other, um, that have a really good rapport, and maybe they play them in the store, but it's not something, these aren't events that necessarily work really great to pull people in from all over the place and then have them try to engage in a game of, in a day of gaming. That is what the other format style is for, or game modes, things like that. Things where the expectations can be set up. It requires a lot less stuff, again, to run a draft in the way that the collector format does. It requires a lot of coordination between the players. You have to make sure that your packs include stuff that everybody has access to. Uh, it's going to be a longer day. There's a lot of things that go into it. So that's why we wanted to give that definition as well and kind of guide people into, you know, you're, we want to make sure always, 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 always. We talked about this when we did the banned and restricted list and stuff. We want to make sure that when people get together to play the game, they're set up for success. They're gonna have the most fun possible and everyone's gonna know what's expected and what to, what to expect. And that's gonna to lead to everyone having a much better time, a much smoother game experience. And we're all gonna walk away happy and excited to do it again. And so providing this kind of guidance, these kind of, I don't wanna call them rules, but we'll call them guidelines. You know, We'll use some pirate code language here. Is gonna make sure that everyone's gonna be on the same page you're not going to run into those situations that's going to cause friction, like trying to run an arena format with a bunch of folks who have never even met before. Those are the things that are going to like make sure that the communities grow, they thrive, and that everything that we do achieves its ultimate goal, which is to create fun. So it's very easy to bring a whole bunch of people who don't typically play together and do a Battle Realm format and have them all have a great time because they know what to expect and it's very easy to set up and run and organize and it's perfect for an in-store event for a local gaming club event for anything like that but the collector format is certainly not exactly in that same vein so we've set that up we've explained what game modes are because you're going to see a whole lot more game modes as we go forward in fact, that's one of the biggest things that we've identified for our organized play kits that go to stores is that we really want to continue to expand the gaming experience and the manner in which you can play and experience the narrative stories and excitement of Marvel Crisis Protocol in the battles. We started with Ultimate Encounters. Vibranium Heist is kind of a view into the next one. We want to do even more stuff in the future that the article talks about. You know, multi more multiplayer formats, more co-op formats, more narrative focused formats, all kinds of stuff. So now to jump back to the painting, I've mixed a bit of that Marduk yellow into the green and now I'm just kind of doing another layer of additional highlight to the skin and blending that out with my brush. Just kind of make sure that my transitions are smooth and blend.
Respectfully ask an excellent question. There's a Simone Elliott, our head of studio, in the stream. So I'm sure she'll let you know. But we mostly focus just on hobbying and painting on these streams. We definitely have plans to expand all of our content now that we've grown and adopt and you know taken on alongside the folks who were doing such great work on them beforehand and bringing them onto the team and becoming one new super fam um, for the things like the Star Wars stuff. And you're going to be seeing more of that as we get into the 2021 year. Obviously, we're still in a little bit of a transitional period where we're figuring how best to approach everything and what needs to happen so that, much like I've been talking about with these game formats, um, everything that we do going forward continues to improve the gaming experience and the fun and the excitement of those things. So we want to be considerate in that and not rush too fast in anything if we can avoid it. But Certainly you'll see a, more and more content coming out as we move forward and get things going. I'm just looking for kind of the big tops of the thighs, things like that, places where that light is really going to hit. I'm just using that blending brush to smooth out my transitions, and I'm feeling pretty good. This is a, this can be as an extreme a step or as minimal a step as you want. I'm pretty happy with how the wash over the zenith works, so I'm really just using this to accentuate and kind of give that a little extra level of pop, those highlights. Schick talking nonsense and painting, rude. I gave you a whole bunch of new game information for MCP. That's not nonsense, that's hard work. We haven't gotten into the nonsense yet. We'll get there, we'll get there. Coming on this calf muscle here. Hit that out. I hope everybody has exciting, safe plans for the holidays, depending on which one you celebrate at this point, where you are in the world. Don't let 2021 or 2020 get you down. 2021 is on its way. I mean, I don't know if it'll feel different than 2020 part two, but we can always hope. And if nothing worse, you know. All right, I'm gonna leave that thigh mostly in shadow because I think it's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna hit that nose. I'm get the eyebrows because she's got the angry face going on. She's mad. She's a Hulk. She's not messing around. And we're gonna go back in. We'll mix in a little bit more yellow into our green. We'll just kind of make a super high highlight. So back to the Madruk yellow. And this time we're looking for approximately more of like a three to one yellow to green. So it's definitely on the yellow yellow side. So we're going to use this pretty sparingly, and we're going to blend it out with that other brush. All right, so hit this kneecap here. And this is really more of like a really fine layer, so we're just kind of like lining a little bit. And then using that extra brush to kind of smooth out our highlight lines. So you can kind of see how we're hitting all this stuff. Like right here is where I went with my line, so it's really bright. That light's really hitting it because that yellow is nice and reflective. There are these studio lights. 
studio lights like I'm in someplace official. It's still just the laundry room. Although at this point it's full of so many things that it might as well be as official as the real studio. I got so many plastic kits in the mail yesterday, it's insane. So many things to review and catch up on, so much cool stuff. 2021 is going to be amazing. I'm excited to share it all with you. But my new Taskmaster BK has already, has already learned too much from Josh. He's learned the power that he can wield. I think I got away with my one last week when I, when I spoiled She-Hulk's affiliation. It's my one shot. We'll have to do like an after party paint stream that we don't invite anyone else from the office to. That'll be the real one. We'll get truthy in that one. All the secrets. That's not true. If we spoiled all the secrets, what fun would there be? Anticipation's the best part. There we go. Losing my focus. I'm just going to come through here. Can you smooth this out? Try to avoid those deeper recesses that we hit with the wash. Kind of this collarbone here. And so when you're looking at the blending with the other brush, you kind of just want to think about making those lines in between on like a normal layer highlight, just using that to kind of smooth out the edges a little bit. So you get more of a transition of color. And you're using that by using that secondary brush to kind of stretch the paint. So because it's moist, it's not too wet, but it's just damp enough, you can stretch out, you can stretch out that paint. Which helps just smooth out those color transitions a little bit because instead of going from hard line to hard line, you get kind of like a nice little fade. Which works out really well. And it means that you don't have to be quite as precise with those lines either because you can kind of clean them up as you go. So I'm just going to hit that face. Right here, getting in that forehead can be tricky. Because I know I can blend it back out. I can go a little heavier. And I can just work it out a little bit. And get that face looking really nice. We'll do a little bit on our high cheekbones. One of the things that I Dallas talks about a lot, and I feel like someday when I have a little extra time, I'm totally gonna do is if you want to learn how to paint faces better, watch, watch makeup tutorials and like it's the same idea just applied to a miniature you know you can totally fake the eye and the shape of the face and stuff by knowing where to apply those highlights and that cheek and the colors and stuff so it's always fascinating watching those videos where you see those transformations and stuff so I'm feeling pretty good about that. I think we have some really nice color transitions. Our green is really popping. She looks really sharp. You know, we left areas in shadow and shadow. And we didn't even bother with them, which saved us some time. Like for example, I didn't really touch this leg at all from the front. So this is just our normal color. You can even see, oh look, there's no paint right there. No one will ever see it because they're always going to look at it this way. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I think we can call that green skin happily done. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab our holder blue, which you remember is the blue that we used last week for our blue suit. Now last week when we did the shade, we mixed it in with pure straight black. For our highlight, we're going to use pure white. 
This is very much an exception to the normal rule, which is to not use pure black and pure white when you highlight, but Halder Blue is so punchy, it's so filled with color, that straight black, straight white is a great way to do highlights and shades with it, and you won't even notice any kind of dilution in the color saturation or tone. So yeah, I'm just gonna check this out really quick where we want it. I think I might have to go a little bit more white because we're really just looking for poppiest highlights. So we're going to grab a little bit more white because we're not quite where I want to be. I'll mix more in. There we go. Seems pretty good. Yeah, we have the white little dot. That's actually her zipper. So we'll come back in and we'll paint the zipper right here. Chad is saying that she looks like she's got the priestly vestment. That's a little, it's a little true. It's a little true. I'm, it's hard to argue with that, but it's a zipper. So we'll come in and we'll do that probably gold or brass. I feel like that's going to look really nice against that blue. So again, with this, we're just kind of coming through. We're going to do some quick highlights on the outfit. And we already have some pretty nice guides when it comes to that initial wash of Holder Blue we did over the Zenith Prime last week. So this is our opportunity to go back in, kind of clean some stuff up. Or maybe our shade got a little too strong. Or we just want to kind of like mellow out some of those whites because we do have some pretty strong whites showing through, like right here on the thigh. The wash really pulled away. So I just want to smooth that out a little bit. And this is a really nice way to come in and take things carefully. see you yeah she's a super fun she's a super fun character to play on the table a lot of fun designing her talk about last week one of my favorites long time she hulk fan really just enjoyed the character and all of her different interpretations in various media from the cartoons to the comics they're one of those characters that can break the fourth wall a little bit, which I think is just fun. Give some commentary on the world and the place in which she is and kind of how pop culture is moving around her. It's very much the classic she, sensational She-Hulk kind of mantra. She doesn't really do that as much anymore. Although I think the new creative teams have knocked it out of the park from, you know, Allie McBeal, superhero She-Hulk kind of more focus on the lawyer side of things. That was a really fun run. All the way up to the more modern, like Savage She-Hulk and the events following Civil War II. You know, I'm really excited to see where they go with it next, following the events of Empire. And now she's, you know, reported to, we're expecting the immortal She-Hulk, I believe, is the statement that I, that I saw recently. So, super excited. So much good stuff. So much fun with the character. And in the game, a lot of fun too. She definitely lays the the hurt with her steel girder. We're gonna go in and we're at way more white and then hold her blue. We're gonna get some really sharp spot highlights here. And then I think we'll be able to move on to the next step. So again, I've just mixed probably majority of white with a little bit of holder blue because it's so punchy and we're just gonna go around and we're gonna find these kind of ribs, little seam separators between the lines. I'm just gonna pick those out for sure. 
I don't want to cover the whole line, but I do want to give them those little like zings of highlight, which will help pull the separation out. And just lets the eye kind of catch them a little easier. And then we go back through in dark line. I'll add that extra level of separation so that the eye can really see what's going on there. And I'll be able to pick out those differences between the blue and the white. So again, it's just like it doesn't take the whole line. I just come in and let the brush like tap and run over those seams because they're nice and raised and you use the edge of the brush for a lot of good control. But I'm excited for folks to get their hands on she-Hulk and start running A-Force and uh, just have a whole lot of fun beating the crap out of people because they are a very aggressive team and they really function well with a lot of front liners and the tactic cards they have um, open up a lot of fun opportunity to be pretty aggressive it's probably as far as I can go with that statement but yeah there's some pretty good ones Definitely one of my favorite affiliations thus far. X-Men and cool are cool and all. I love playing the Children of the Atom, as it were, the Uncanny X and the Brotherhood, but A-Force definitely has my, my heart. Partly because it has one of my favorite characters. It's just a joy to be able to bring that stuff to the table and do some really exciting stuff. Although 2021's got a lot of really cool stuff coming. Kind of retrospective slash looking forward. You know, kick off with She-Hulk and Angela. Josh showed off the Inhuman, so that's real big. Of course, we got the Merc with the Mouth and his buddies coming along. I mean, that's just the start of it. We've been, we've been busy bees. The whole team has really killed it this year, and I'm very excited to now be a bigger and more powerful studio. Getting to work on other projects with more talented folks, bringing their expertise to the field, and you know, we're just learning all kinds of stuff. It's great. Make it spicy, Bob. Muy caliente. All right, so I got those kind of ribs where I want them. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna hit this high collar right here. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit, some of our scritched lines. We've talked about these before, especially on the Beast episode where we did Beast and did all of his fur. I just want to get a little bit of that texture in there. So what I'm doing is I'm just coming through and I'm just hitting kind of the most raised edges. And that little bit of like texture lining helps give that extra dimensionality to the fabric. It gives it a little bit of a microfold feel if you go too thick. You just come in with your blend brush and you can clean it back out smooth it back out your eraser brush so I just want to come in give that a little extra those extra little zings that really helps the fabric feel more real more like it's stretching and pulling in the way that fabric does gives that extra little bit of volume and highlight So it's just kind of like, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit, like a huge amount of difference. 
especially over darker colors. With lighter colors, sometimes you have to mix up some unique looking blends. Like uh, when I did my Kree Star Force Captain Marvel, who was kind of in a minty green suit, I had to mix in some pink to get the right kind of highlight. Make it a little more turquoisey. You just kind of see how those those little bit of stretches just add that extra like feel of realism to the cloth. They let it pop just a little bit more. We don't have to focus too much on this side because a lot of this is in shadow, but I just want to give it give those microphones a little bit of extra pop. Those rippling back muscles a little bit. Really powerful wing muscles. Yeah. So there. So you kind of see how we've now got that going on. We're looking really good. So I'm very happy with that. I need to go back and do the fingers really quick. So let's do that. Well, our green paint is still going on. Ooh. Put my hand in the green paint. That was perfect. <laughs> leadership abilities hit things with girders. Uh, I think the panel to play actually talked about her leadership ability. So uh, it's more like if you hit her friends with girders, that's when the trouble happens. They're they're pretty protective bunch. They don't they don't muss around with the whole like having their friends get beat up. It makes them all very angry. So I'm just gonna come back in really quick. We're gonna do a little wet blend because we can. Our paints are all ready to go. So this is just with that first green goblin green skin layer. We're just coming in and kind of blending it in. Now to be perfect with this, nobody's really gonna pay too much attention to our fingers. But we just wanna make sure that they have the right amount of color on them. So there. So now we've got the gloves. We got that. We'll jump in and do a little bit of highlighting on that white. And for this, we're just going to dive in with our pure white. Not even going to mix it. We're just going to blend a little bit on. This is again much like we just did with the blue on the suit, we're just going to do some really quick kind of super highs. When we talk about this with white a lot, you know, you don't need a lot of pure white to make your color read as pure white. In fact, too much will kind of muddy up the works and make it not look as good. So you definitely want to do Colors like Arctic Blue or Off-Whites, those kinds of things to start. And then just do a really quick, easy pass on the highest points with that pure white. Not only does it make painting that white so much easier, because you're not having to do layer after layer after layer, it helps a lot with that smoothness. White can get really chalky. You have to really find a pure white that goes on very smooth. It's kind of like yellow. So starting not with the pure color, but moving to that pure color from a off-white is a great way to go. And of course, white is mostly about its shadows. So most of what you see when you look at white anyway is not actually pure white. It's the shades and shadows and the color underneath. So it doesn't take much of that pure white to really start to make it sell and feel like the whole thing is actually pure white. Go in here, close a little bit. 
Let's go up a little bit. We'll come down to the shoes. Kind of around the rim of that shoe. And the rim of this shoe. And this is another kind of thing to think about when you're working on your colors is you know it's really hard to tell kind of what's going on with those shoes right now because they're muddled in with this gray sprayed base so sometimes it's best to paint around it and do your base coat and then come back so you can see that contrast between the two and you'll notice that like what looks really muddy is actually pretty clean and of course when it comes to the feet as we've talked about you don't have to worry too much about that even if they are kind of muddy because nobody really looks at the feet all that attention is going to be right where the camera is, which is the face and kind of the upper torso and such. So, come in where we have our white. And we're just going to dot in that eye. Use our other brush to clean it up. And then we're going to do the hard eye, which is the opposite eye, because that one's even hidden. This is the benefit of having that secondary brush where you can just really clean up overspills and stuff. You don't have to have that perfect hand necessarily. You can smooth it out. Get it to a point to where you're happy with it. I might have to do that other eye once I can do some really crazy gymnastics here. We need to come back in with a little bit of black wash and run it around that eye anyway. A little bit more form. And can't even get in there. Probably not too easily this way. We got our whites in. Like I said, we'll come in with a little bit of black wash around them. And just kind of thin that out. So we'll grab some Vallejo black wash. Yes. So not a scale, just a just simple pre-mixed Vallejo black wash, which is really nice. Gonna go in and hit it. We are planning some streams covering uh, non-MCP content. For those asking in chat, those will be coming probably early next year. In January, we're just kind of locking down our final plans, make sure that we have everything in a row. Um, so there's plenty of there's plenty of really exciting stuff coming. Just a little bit of a wait to get there. So I'm just using a little bit of that black wash to go in. Help really define that eye. And I'm just going to clean up around it. Now if we want to, we can go back in with our other green because it's still wet on our palette. We do just a little bit. But 
touch up because we have all the time in the world Josh All right, so I'm going to grab a little bit of off-white. So we're going to grab some Mojave white. And I'm going to mix this in with my green, and we're going to make a little bit of a lip color. So I'm kind of looking for that plus a little bit of green plus a little bit of probably brick red or purple. Let's go with purple. That was a good color. Yeah, sure. We'll use some of this blood fresh, blood fresh crimson. Um, so I'm not going for like, not necessarily going for a makeup color like she's wearing lip gloss. I'm looking for something a little more uh, natural. But that still has that green kind of hit to it. And so using kind of a either an umber or purpley red will kind of help give that difference in lip color. So it'll stand out without being too, too punchy. And of course you can do whatever you want. And then when it comes to painting any lips, it's really best to focus primarily on the bottom lip and leave the top lip alone. Doing both lips can work, but often will run you into that clown problem because that top lip just becomes too noticeable. And then we'll go back to our black wash here. And we'll just use it to shade up the inside of the mouth. So this is a really quick and easy way to do that. And if you want to come back through and So now we've got that nice differentiation on the lip. And it looks pretty just natural and simple. But you do anything you wanted to with the color. She definitely has some really sweet sneakers. You know, those are cross-training gym shoes right there. She's all about it. Okay. Let's go ahead and dive into that steel girder really quick. So we're going to use our black metal. We're just going to make a really dingy kind of steel girder that's been inside of something for a long time. Pretty much the same thing we did on Magneto. What a really nice way to do it. So we just start with our steel color. And then once you have your steel color down, you can come back through and you can do brown washes. You can do black washes. You can do blue washes, purple washes, any kind of wash. Really paint that steel however you want it to look. You want it to be really rusty. You can come back in with like some sienna colors, some like reddish bricky browns or anything you want. Really bright oranges if you want it to be really rusted over. Um, there's a lot of different ways to approach metals. We should probably just do like a whole thing on different metals. We did one on bases a while ago. Metal seems like a great one for senior Dallas Kemp. You, know, you can do colored metals. We've done a lot of colored metallics on different characters. A lot of our characters utilize a lot of fancy space age metals and such. So it all comes down to basically finding a nice solid steel or metallic coat and then just using inks and glazes and washes to get those effects that you want. You can stipple, you can dry brush. Metals are so fun. You can do so much with them. And it's pretty easy and quick. But today, because we're running out of time, seven minutes left, Woo! we'll just do a really simple kind of 
basic steel girder as I go completely off camera. Ha ha. So what happens? These kind of awkward, awkward angles when you have to stay on the camera. And I see that I got a little bit on her hair. So I just grab my mistake brush. I can just scrub it away. So it's no longer on her hair. All right, perfect. So there's our first coat of metallic down. You know, like honestly, that could just be good enough. We'll just go through and we'll wash it here in a second once it dries. I think we're going to do one more thing on the greens just to kind of finish them off. Feel the beams. Oh, I like it. That could be the name of the episode, Dallas. You're on this. I'm going to use some ink tense lime and I'm just going to create a really quick glaze for my skin because I just want to take it to that next level. And I'm going to mix it in. I'm going to mix in a little ink tense yellow. We're just going to really amp it up here. So we're going to go about like one to one, I think. Maybe two to one on the yellow. This would be pretty punchy. Uh, no, I think one to one did it pretty good. I'm just going to thin it out with a little bit of water. So again, I'm just looking for that glaze consistency which is thin, but a smooth application. We're just going to pull it. We're just going to go over. And this will kind of help smooth out all of our different transitions and blends. We'll have that extra pop. And that extra pop of color to the skin that we want, because we're looking for something really vibrant. Glazes can really bring colors to a whole new level. Typically you have to do a couple coats of them, but we'll just do one for today. You want to make sure that they're applying nice and smooth. You don't want them to pool, because a wash is the one you want to pool. A glaze, you want to be like a smooth, like a thin film, a veneer, if you will, over the whole thing. So you want it to be pretty even in its application, nice and smooth. You know, you're just laying that, that layer of tint over the whole surface. And as long as it's equal and stuff, it's going to cause the same amount of tinting over the whole thing. And that's going to help, again, bring all those colors together, add that extra level of pop. And a lot of glazing typically takes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. As many coats as you want to get the effect, and you can kind of go as crazy or as not crazy as you want with it. Picked up a straggler. Come here. Sometimes you get a little bit of dirt on your thing. There we go. Smooth some of that down. Oh, and I promised we'd fixed her. We'd fixed her. Her vestment. Let's do that really quick. Let's use Viking Gold. First gold I grabbed. Looks like it's going to be cool. We'll give her a nice shiny zipper. Come in. And that zipper. There we go. Now 
All right. So overall, looking pretty happy with this. There's a little bit of extra attention that we can do once we're off camera to finish her up. Obviously, we still need to do the base. We can fix, we can hit those eyes a little bit, get this other eye that's really hard to get on camera because we kind of have to like turn her upside down and do some really weird stuff to get in there. Um, we'll do a quick wash on the steel. But overall, I'm very happy with where our fantastic, sensational She-Hulk turned out. Uh, we got some really nice, bright, poppy green skin. The Holder Blue looks fantastic. I'm really digging that white-blue combination. So we got our gold zipper. So we're ready to go. So with that, we're going to call this She-Hulk done. We're going to wrap up this second stream. I'm going to bid you all a farewell and adieu. Be sure to watch on the Atomic Mass Games a website for the posting of those new game formats along with a exciting informational article concerning said formats, game modes, and base games. All the information that you need to be able to plan for your 2021 adventures when it comes to Marvel Crisis Protocol. Be sure to join Dallas Kemp as he paints Enchantress or finishes Enchantress or moves on to Angela. I'm not entirely sure. It'll be one of those two things. He's going to be hitting that on Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific. And, of course, I'll be back here on Tuesday next week at 1 p.m. Pacific. And I will be painting Angela for sure. So we're going to get some paint on Angela. Have fun. Talk some more about stuff. Hopefully you'll have some uh, time to look over those formats. Ask all the game questions you want. I'll answer what I can. Uh, probably won't be very much because BK is a taskmaster, much like Josh was. But we'll hang out and have fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure that you all stay safe. Be great to each other. And we will see you on the next one. Goodbye.